Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another uh, Trailblazers We Love, and really excited today to have uh, Shea Perez uh, with us. How are you doing today, Shea? Hi, Sam. I am doing well. Um, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. <laughs> no, the honor is all ours. Um, Shea and I met at Life Sciences Dream In, which is a conference that we held in August, uh, the first ever uh, Life Sciences-focused uh, Dream In event. Uh, so that was really great. Um, and I know that you recently started as a uh, Salesforce admin at a partner company. How's that uh, been going so far? Uh, it's going really well. Um, it is a little bit of um, a transition from healthcare to wealth management. But aside mm -hmm. from that, you know, everybody's great. Um, culture is good. <laughs> I have no complaints. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm sure you're mm -hmm. going to do a great job there and they're lucky to have you. <laughs> Um, and that's actually a really good segue, uh, you know, talking about transitions. I've done a couple of these, uh, Shea, with various people. Uh, and, you know, interesting to hear their stories, how they got into the Salesforce ecosystem. I talked to Lori. I know you know her. Uh, you know, she also went mm -hmm. from healthcare. And uh, I talked to uh, Joconda, who came uh, from the military uh, spouses side of things. Um, so how, how, did, how was it that you got your... Uh, start in the in the Salesforce ecosystem. Sure. Um, so I'm not sure how often you get this answer, but I discovered <laughs> Salesforce in a in a totally random way. Um, ah. One of my friends had posted um, a day in the life of a Salesforce admin um, video on her YouTube channel, oh, and cool. um, and that was the first time I heard of it. Um, around that time, I was still working as a nurse. Um, that was in February of this year, actually. And, but I knew I wanted to, I knew I wanted to change. I just didn't know how. Um, so out of curiosity, I reached out to this friend and asked her about it. And she recommended um, like the five day challenge from Talent Stacker and then the Salesforce for Everyone podcast, which is also from Talent Stacker. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and after listening actually to the healthcare episode, which you mentioned, Lori, um, she was in that episode. Um, that's what <laughs> got me hooked. <laughs> So I was like, oh, okay, well, there's a lot of people from healthcare transitioning. So, you know, maybe I'll give it a try. And I'm joining Talent Stacker um, in February of this year. And I got my certification admin um, April. And, you know, I started my role in November of this year. And it's been quite the journey. I've been to a lot of events. Like you said, I met you guys through Life Sciences Dream In, a um, couple of world tours. So it's been really fun. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Somehow everything always leads back to Lori in some way or another. So that's uh, <laughs> uh, really cool to hear. And, you know, congratulations again on, uh, you know, entering the space within in February, completing it in May and then finding finding a career. That's really awesome. Uh, it does seem like a lot yeah. of people transitioned out of healthcare at the, at the pandemic. Uh, I'm sure that could have been mm -hmm. a, a difficult time. But so I'm yeah. interested to learn. Uh, you know, what, what are what is your favorite Salesforce resource? Like when you were trying to, you know, gain some knowledge, I know that you went to Talent Stacker, but outside of that, like, were there any particularly helpful resources that you uh, turned to? Yeah. So um, outside of Trailhead and Talent Stacker, I did use um, just for training and instructional like um, material. I did use um, Get For Certified by Dave Massey. Um, mm. When I started, he only had associates admin and flows. I think he has more courses now, but I really liked his course because he breaks everything down into like bite size, like more digestible, like piece of information, like five minute videos. And right. to me, I learn, I learn when I see it and then I hear it, you know, instead of just reading everything flat on like the screen and you can pause it. I followed along. It just really helped me cement all those um you know concepts or topics that I was learning mm -hmm. and um outside of the instructional part um I do also recommend Salesforce Ben it's my go-to especially now <laughs> that I've finished you know learning everything I just go back to Salesforce Ben because their articles are so easy to understand so even if you're new um I remember there was a topic like um, I just couldn't understand like inbound, outbound change sets, you know, and I just I went to Salesforce Ben instead. I was like, oh, this makes more sense. 
<laughs> yeah, we've had a couple yeah, of people, a couple of people reference Salesforce Ben is a really great resource. So yes. uh, it's clear that they're doing a really good job over there. Um, mm -hmm. I was curious about uh, what you thought was, you know, an underrated Salesforce product or a best kept secret. I mean, everybody knows about Sales Cloud or, you know, some of the more well-known clouds, but are there any underrated Salesforce products or best kept secrets that, that you want to share? Um, I would say underrated and also my favorite would be just the Salesforce utility bar. Um, mm. <laughs> I know global actions are, you know, yeah, it's cool. You can do it anywhere, but it's limited, you know, and the name itself is just actions. Same for actions and an object that's pretty limited. But with um, utility bar, you can put a flow in there. You know, you can pull data you can look up um, a customer or a client's record. You can have your recent items, list view, you know, whatever tasks you want to see. You can also have a rich text and hyperlinks, um, training information. Um, you know, if you want to see a visual force page, you can do that. And my favorite part is um, my company uses this. We have like an open CTI system. We use Zoom as a, our telephony system. So I can just dial from there. I don't even have to, you know, get rid of my headset, pull the phone up. I just, you know, stay on Salesforce and I don't have to move Directly through the so utility board. Mm -hmm. And you can customize it, you know, depending on the app. If salespeople use different stuff than service people, and then you can, you know, move things around. So it's Does it call favorite. from your phone or does it like give you a number, like a, an auto-generated number on their end? It, it, I, it gives a, um, we have like our own number. Okay. Yeah. So it, it just routes through your phone basically, but you're calling mm -hmm. to the utility bar. That's cool. Yeah. That is cool. Um, yeah. This this next question is uh, probably the hardest question there. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, I am curious uh, if you have any predictions for Salesforce in 2024. Some people might be watching this in January. So let's say uh, for the rest of 2024, or if you don't have a prediction, what's something that you would like to see from Salesforce? So you can, either direction you want to take it, uh, feel free to. Um, I guess with, you know, with all the AI advances we've seen in this year, like it started from Einstein GPT in March of this year. Right. And then we had the Einstein Copilot and then, you know, Prompt Builder, Prompt Studio. I can only, you know, assume that Salesforce will keep, you know, their AI momentum going, continuing sure. to adapt to whatever technology is released out there. But at the same time, I'm really excited actually about, you know, their life sciences cloud that they're releasing. So that's something I really want to see. Separating yeah, that also, from the cloud. Yeah. Yeah. We're also really curious what that's going to uh, entail you know, mm -hmm. how uh, actualized <laughs> those things are going to be in the early parts of 2024. Um, okay. How much are you using their current AI offerings, would you say? Um, I Very little Einstein. We're not using Copilot or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to do my due diligence and use some AI tools, but uh, I, I definitely agree with you that next year we're going to see, you know, more user adoption and uh, mm -hmm. the capabilities are going to be pretty interesting. Um, I'll let you get out of here, but we have one last question that we like to ask <laughs> our uh, trailblazers. And that is, uh, you know, non-Salesforce related, give us a recommendation for a book or a podcast, a cooking show. Anything that uh, you're really into right now that's not Salesforce related? Sure. Um, so lately I've been really, and I think it's just because I, I work now in a wealth management firm, but um, mm -hmm. I have been really into investing and building wealth. So I started reading this book that was like highly recommended. It's called The Simple Path to Wealth by J.L. Collins. Um, mm. This book generally just teaches you like the basics of investing. Um, he talks about the different types of, you know, retirement accounts, funds, different ways you can allocate your assets, depending on your lifestyle and, you know, however you want to live later in life. So if you are interested in, you know, learning how to invest, it's a highly recommended book. It's really easy to follow. Awesome. 
Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Shea. Uh, it's been a real pleasure for us, and I'm sure the people watching as well. Um, hope to hear from you soon. Thank you for having me.